بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد I began by reminding myself and all of my brothers and sisters in Islam that each and every opportunity, each and every moment, each and every day that Allah gives us is a gift that we don't know will, will it continue to the next day or not. That for each and every one of us there are friends and loved ones and there are relatives who attended previous Ramadans but are not here in this particular Ramadan. And I myself had a cousin uh, who I visited him 15 months ago and in the month of Ramadan he alhamdulillah healthy everything is in his 40s and on the very day of Eid one year ago on the very day of Eid in the celebrations and in the friend's house that he went to here in America he just sat down and that was it his ruh was taken from him as a young man with four kids completely unexpected and none of us could ever have imagined and this is something not just in my family your family everyone and as we say, as, as our, some of our scholars of the past said, the angel of death never takes vacation. The angel of death never has a holiday. And Allah knows what will be our last Ramadan. And it could be this one, but we pray that Allah gives us many more Ramadans. But our goal needs to be to make each Ramadan the very best. Because subhanAllah, wallahi, when I heard the news of my cousin's death, of course there was a sadness and grief, but then I thought subhanAllah, he passed away literally less than 12 hours after the end of the month of Ramadan. Literally the whole month he's been worshipping and praying and fasting, and then alhamdulillah, inshaAllah on a clean slate, and even though it was the day of Eid, then the family is of course very hurt and very traumatized. But yet at the same time, this is a blessing because what more beautiful time than right after getting the entire month down to the last day. And then very first day, which is the day of Eid, that was what Allah Azza wa had written for him. My point being that, let us strive to make sure that this Ramadan is our best Ramadan, and then every Ramadan that Allah blesses us, make that our best Ramadan. Because that's really the goal, that every year we continue to rise up, every year that Ramadan is our boost that takes us up higher and higher. And realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that of the blessings of this month, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lifted from us the burdens of eating and drinking. So we don't have to worry about making breakfast and making lunch. The whole day is a day where we can concentrate on the ruh, on the soul. We don't have to worry about taking care of our physical needs. There are no physical needs to take care of now. And therefore it is a time that we concentrate on the ruh, concentrate on our spiritual uh, soul. And realize that just like our body needs its nourishment, our soul also needs its nourishment. And one of the reasons of lifting the nourishment of the body during the day of Ramadan is so that we can concentrate on the nourishment of the soul. Now that we don't have to worry about cooking for our bodies, let us now provide for our souls. And we feel more spiritual Ramadan because as we all know, we have these two components of the body and the soul. And these two components are always at odds with one another. There's a bit of a tension because when we take care too much of the body, then the soul suffers. When we immerse ourselves in bodily pleasures, even if they're halal, if we immerse ourselves completely in bodily pleasures, we neglect the soul. And if we immerse ourselves completely in the soul, then we neglect the body, and our religion is a happy balance between the two. And the purpose of this month is to kind of minimize the body, just to concentrate more on the soul. Also realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that when we feel those pangs of hunger, this is in fact a time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to thank Allah for the blessings that we have in this month and outside of this month. And to thank Allah that these pangs of hunger are voluntary and are not beyond our control, unlike many of our Muslims brothers and sisters, including those who are suffering right now as we speak in Somalia, there is a famine going on that is of catastrophic proportions. And what is happening there, log on and see for yourself and look at the, 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 the YouTube videos about that. And this is the month that we need to thank Allah that those pangs of hunger that we feel are temporary just for three, four hours. And we thank Allah that we can provide for ourselves and our families. There should be an extra time to rejoice at the blessings of Allah. Also, I advise myself and all of you to take advantage of Ramadan to perfect our actions of worship that we had otherwise been neglectful of. First and foremost amongst them is the five prayers. This is the time to perfect our prayers. And if we were of those who are praying five times a day, let us try to increase and make the, the sunan ratiba. Because our Prophet ﷺ said that whoever perfects praying those 12 raka'at of sunan every single day, 
Allah will build for him a palace in Jannah. Imagine when the builder is Allah and the land is Jannah, what type of palace we will get and what is the payment that we have to pay? The Sunan al Ratib, those 12 raka'at every day. Whoever continuously prays. And you know those 12 raka'at, they literally can be done in 10 minutes. Literally, 12 minutes, max 12 minutes. And you pray a decent 12 raka'at, 12 minutes. If you pray these 12 raka'at, you will get that house in Jannah. So for those who are praying regularly, they need to upgrade to get that palace. For those who are praying those sunan and ratibah, they need to upgrade even more. Because that's what Ramadan means, you need to upgrade, you don't go down. And so if you're praying that, then concentrate on Qiyamul Layl, on the Taraweeh. And for those who can pray at home, Alhamdulillah, that is in some ways better because you can pray longer and more personal. But for many of us, praying at home is difficult. And for those, we have those Taraweeh prayers here in the Masjid. And therefore, we should concentrate on praying Taraweeh in the Masjid if we cannot pray it at home. And if a day happens that we cannot pray it at the Masjid, we pray it at home. The bottom line, every single night, pray extra prayers in the night of Ramadan. Whether it's the Taraweeh of the Masjid, whether it's the Qiyam at home, whether it's the both of them combined, which is even better, you need to pray extra. Why? Because our Prophet ﷺ said, hadith is in Bukhari, anyone, whoever stands the entire month of Ramadan, will have all of his previous sins forgiven. As long as he has that Iman and wanting Allah's reward. So on a daily basis, this is in Ramadan, we increase beyond the Sunan al-Ratibah and we concentrate on the night prayer, which is the Qiyam, which is called Taraweeh. And as we pray Taraweeh, let us also try to pray the full Taraweeh behind the Imam. Why? Because our Prophet ﷺ said that whoever prays this night prayer behind the Imam until the Imam finishes, shall be rewarded as if he prayed the whole night in prayer. If you make a point to come for the full night, i.e. in our case one and a half hours is what we're praying. And that's why we're doing this as an incentive to make it family friendly. We have kids, I have kids, you have kids, we cannot unfortunately, we wish we could, we cannot pray till 3 a.m. every night. So we try to make it reasonable. And by doing this, it's an encouragement for all of us. Let us make a punctual thing that one and a half hours every night we will come to pray Qiyamul Layl. For those whose kids can afford to sleep that night, and if not then, for the mothers, for the parents, they can stay at home and they can pray over there. But whatever you do, pray. Even if it's at home, and even if it's using your own mushaf, you're allowed to hold the Qur'an for the nafil prayers. You're allowed to hold the Qur'an and read from the Qur'an during these nafil prayers. So whatever you do, make sure that you pray every single night to get that extra reward. Also, of the blessings that we need to think about in this month, is that this is a month that is a month of tawbah, and a month of mercy, and a month of forgiveness. This is a month that the purpose of it is to think about our past sins, to think about what we have done in the past, in order to make sure we don't do them in the future. This is a month where we increase in our istighfar, and our tawbah. And inshaAllah ta'ala, one of the khutbahs we're going to be giving in this month, is going to be about the etiquettes of tawbah, and how to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a month of worship and not a month of laziness. This is a month of action and not a month of inertia. This is a month where you do and not a month where you don't. And unfortunately many of us, we have reversed this and we make Ramadan as an excuse not to do. Whereas Ramadan should be a month that brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also realize that the primary purpose of Ramadan is to purify our soul and our spirituality and to purify our organs. Just like we are not eating and drinking to fill our stomach, now we need to stop committing sins with our eyes, our ears, our tongues, our limbs. And that's exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever doesn't stop lying and cheating and acting evilly, Allah has no need that he abandons his food and his drink. And therefore be conscious if somebody rebukes you, if somebody says something, if the eyes begin to wander, remember, what is the purpose of all of this pain, all of this suffering, all of this hardship, if my tongue is not controlling itself, if my eyes are not controlling themselves. And the purpose of Ramadan, as I said many times, you show yourself that you can live without food and water, and you need food and water. If you can show yourself that you can live without food and water, well then you've proven you can live without committing sins, right? Because sins are not essential to live. Sins are something you're doing to harm yourself. And if you can show yourself that I don't even need food and water, Allah will take care of me. And Allah will provide for me 15 hours a day. I don't need food and water. Well then why do you need to commit sins? So the purpose of Ramadan is to bring about that higher level. 
Also realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that Ramadan is a time to think about that which Allah has blessed you with by hiding from the eyes of other men and women. Every one of us has a private life. Every one of us has sins that our spouses don't even know of. Our children don't even know us. As one of the scholars of the past said, that if sins had a smell, then the smell coming from me would cause all of you to run away. This is a scholar of the Tabi'un, a famous scholar saying, if sins had a smell, I would be smelling so bad none of you could sit next to me. And this we thank Allah that Allah has hidden our sins and Allah has kept them secret because look around you. If Allah wanted to, He could expose you like He's exposing other people left and right. If Allah wanted to, He would lift this veil of secrecy that in His mercy He's allowed you to have. So this is the time in Ramadan to think about that veil. And of the names of Allah is a sitir And a sitir means the one who veils the sins of His servants. Of the names of Allah is the one who covers the sins of His servants. So Ramadan is the time we think about that blessing that Allah has given us and we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is the time that we utilize each and every minute of it to do some good. Whether it is dhikr, whether it is Qur'an, whether it is silat al-rahim, which means being good to our relatives. This is the time to call up, especially your parents, whatever you can do for them, your relatives, your, 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 uh, uh, those who have been acquainted with you. This is the time to bring about every single good deed. Ramadan is a time of taking care of the poor and the sick. And this is the best time to give to those who are in need. As we said, Anas bin Malik, the famous uh, Sahabi, he said that the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of people. And in the month of Ramadan, his generosity could only be compared to the gushing wind. It's like the wind, you cannot stop it. That is how his generosity was in the month of Ramadan. He would just give and give and give. And this is of the Sunan of Ramadan that we should revive. In this month of Ramadan, we should increase our nearness to Allah by reading his book, the Qur'an. And Allah Azza wa Jal Himself has linked the Qur'an with Ramadan in His book. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The Qur'an and Ramadan are linked together. And that is why the, the month of Ramadan is called Shahru al-Qur'an. It is the month of the Qur'an. And each and every one of us should try his or her best to Finish the whole book. If they cannot do this, listen to its recitation. If they cannot do this, then whatever they can do every day. But no day of Ramadan should go by except that there is some relationship with the Qur'an. And this is a sunnah that we learn from not just the Qur'an itself that tells us Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an, but also from our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Jibreel will come to him every single night in Ramadan. And he would recite the whole Qur'an to him. And from this we get the custom of reciting the whole Qur'an in Ramadan. From this we get the custom that Jibreel would come and the Prophet would recite the whole Qur'an to Jibreel. And this shows us that reciting the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan is something that even our Prophet Muhammad wasallam did. Many of us, it is difficult to recite a juz a day. Many of us can do it. Those that can, alhamdulillah. If you cannot, then don't just give up and say there's no point. Do whatever you can. Whether it's half a juz, three quarters of a juz, whether it's five pages, something is better than nothing. And also, fill your spare time with the Qur'an. Buy an MP3 player, put it in your car. You can listen to the Qur'an while driving to work. You don't need to listen to haram. Or even the news, and I say this so many times, who remembers the news of one week ago, one month ago, one year ago? You think you need to know every latest minute Put news in its place. Five minutes a day is enough for the events. And then listen to something which is beneficial. And in the month of, of, the Ram, of, of Ramadan, there is really nothing that is more beneficial than the Qur'an. Fill up your entire day with you can, uh, as much as you can with listening to the Qur'an and reciting the Qur'an. In this month, one of the things that we should aim for is to bring about an atmosphere of Islam in our houses and amongst our friends. So if in our houses, we should resurrect praying together as a family. Whatever salawat you're together for, bring about the children and the wife and, and all of them, should bring a jama'ah there so that there's an Islamic environment. Cut back the evil, cut back this box that we call the television that is the biggest killer of time and the worst fahisha that we just indoctrinate our children with the worst images and the worst background and everything. Cut back this evil box and make sure 
ensure that you bring about an Islamic environment inside of the house. And also with your family and friends. If you have friends who are not practicing, who have not utilized Ramadan, why would you want to hang around them? Ramadan shows you who is a good Muslim from who is not. If a person does not become good in Ramadan, there's really no chance of them becoming good. So why are you hanging around such people? Because our Prophet ﷺ said that a person follows the religion of his or her friends. So be careful who you choose as your friends. And this is the month where, alhamdulillah, the Islamic brotherhood, Islamic sisterhood is at its pinnacle. Come to the masjid and see hundreds of faces every day. Salaamu Alaikum, how are you doing? And this is the time to make new friends. If you had a group of friends who are bringing you down, Ramadan is the best opportunity to find friends who will take you up. Come to the masjid and make new friends and invite people to your house and be invited to their house. This is exactly one of the blessings of Ramadan, that you form new friends, friends who are good Muslims, friends who will remind you of Allah, rather than friends who will distance you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the things that we need to concentrate on, and I have to be honest here, this is a sin I am guilty of, not quite a sin, but is an excess that I am guilty of just as much as the rest of us, is that it is a sad fact that even our classical scholars uh, from Al-Ghazali and from many of the scholars of the past, Ibn Qayyim, they all commented that it is a sad reality that Ramadan has become a time of festival rather than a time of worship. And especially when it comes to food and drink, that unfortunately this is a sad reality. Yes, we should be generous. Yes, we should want people to come and, and partake of our food. But at the same time, when the entire uh, effort and money and the entire himma, if you like, becomes to produce 50 different types of food on the dinner table, then Unfortunately, it is primarily the women who suffer because of this, that all day they labor in the kitchen, and they forget their ibadah, they forget their Qur'an, and the men are only looking forward to getting all of this meal. Where is the ibadah? Where is the dhikr? And then, what is the purpose? And this is what something Imam al-Ghazali says, and Imam al-Qayyim and others says, what is the purpose of depriving yourself of food throughout the day and night, over, only to overwhelm it, an overload of food? after Maghrib. What's the purpose? When you just go to an extreme, the whole point of fasting then, it's you've balanced it out and you've made it even worse. Because in this month, we get types of food we don't get in any other month. And this is the fact of the matter, right? We save for the most delicious items. Now, alhamdulillah, a little bit of this is fine and healthy. But to go to excessives, to go to extremes, this is something that no doubt it goes, it really kills the spirit of Ramadan. And this is something all of us are guilty of, all of us. And this is something that many of the scholars of the past pointed out that this kind of sort of, not just kind of sort of, it loses the spirit of the month. Nobody is saying that you go cheap at the same time. Wala tusrifu, innahu la yuhibbul musrifin. Don't go to extremes. If you have four items, five items, alhamdulillah, more than enough, more than enough to have, as we see commonly, 50 items or 40 items. This is simply too much. And to bring about the most exotic dishes, unfortunately, this is not the spirit of Ramadan and is not something that you are fulfilling. And as we said, if you're going to overload after Maghrib, what was the purpose of depriving yourself before Maghrib? Also of the most biggest problems of Ramadan, and this is more common in Muslim lands, alhamdulillah, we're kind of safe of it, the nights of Ramadan become nights of entertainment and joy. And if every single Muslim land, the television stations began uh, producing and airing the most exotic shows and the most enticing shows in the nights of Ramadan. And I remember as a kid, I was lived in Saudi Arabia, I would not want to go to Taraweeh because the best shows come on after Maghrib during Taraweeh. All of the comedies and all of this and that. Now, alhamdulillah, and one good thing at least in America, we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to worry about one thing and that is making the nights of Ramadan nights of entertainment. That's not the purpose of the month, right? After you fasted, you feel shaitan comes and say, you've earned it, go ahead and watch a movie now. What, what, what have you earned? To commit a sin? To, no, you've earned it. If you really earned the, 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 the fast, go and stand in tahajjud to put the icing on the cake, do something extra. So be careful that the nights of Ramadan don't become nights of entertainment and nights of gossip and nights of watching that which is of no use. That's not the purpose of this month. Once Al Hassan Al Basri in the month of Ramadan, he passed by a group of idle men who were just laughing and joking away. And he said, SubhanAllah, this is the month of racing. Listen to this. This is the month of racing. And we're right now in the middle of the race. So either you've already won the race, and here you are laughing about it, i.e. you know you've won, or you've lost it, in which case what are you doing here? 
How can you be laughing? This is the month of sabaq. We're, we're, yani, sabaq in Arabic means racing, right? You, this is the month of racing one another, right? And فَاسْتَبِقُ khairat. And you're sitting here laughing. On what basis are you laughing? You're in the middle of the race. In the middle of the race, you're exerting. You're panicking. You're, you're, you're pushing yourself. How can you be laughing now? Either you guys are literally crazy, or you're not taking advantage of the month. And therefore, taking care of this month and making sure that we finish up to the end and uh, get the best of this month. Also realize this month is a limited month. It's only 30 days. What does Allah say in the Quran? Ayyaman ma'dudat. Ayyaman ma'dudat. It's literally 30 days. Subhanallah. How many Ramadans have we attended? Every time we get to the middle, we say, Oh my God, 15 days have gone. And we get to the last 10 days, Oh my God, the last 10 days have gone. Then we get to the last two, three days, and we feel, Where did all of this month go? Isn't this, we've already experienced it. Been there, done that. Right? This month, Allah says it. Ayyaman ma'dudat. Limited number of days. 30 days, that's it. Maybe 29. Therefore, take advantage of every single day. And realize as well that the time of Eid, the time of Eid is a time of celebration and joy in a spiritual sense and not in a dunya sense. We go overboard on Eid. We go overboard once again when it comes to dress, when it comes to food, when it comes to drink. Nobody is saying don't enjoy Eid. But again, wala tusrifu. Don't go to extremes. Be in the moderate. The purpose of Eid. Allah says in the Quran, I just recited in Salat al-Maghrib, that وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ You finish the time of Ramadan, and then you thank Allah because He has guided you. وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهِ You say the takbir because He has guided you, and so that you may be, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ uh, تَشْكُرُونَ You may be thankful to Him. The purpose of saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, The purpose of this is to thank Allah for having lived through Ramadan. Many of us, Unfortunately, we use Eid as an excuse to destroy those blessings and to not show our appreciation to those blessings. And one final point, and with this inshallah we conclude and open the floor for question and answers. One final point, make sure that this Ramadan allows you the opportunity to be a better Muslim at the end of the month. One of the scholars of the past said, the sign of an accepted Ramadan is that you're a better Muslim at the end of the month than you were before the beginning of the month. What does this mean? It means that Ramadan should raise your level up for the rest of the year. Not just till the day of Eid. The purpose of Ramadan is to give us that Iman boost. In the khutbah that I gave, I said, Ramadan is an upgrade in salary. Ramadan is becoming a manager in your company. Once Ramadan is over, does anybody like to take a downgrade? Does anybody want to go back to what, what they were getting paid as a lower person, lower, lower salary person? Does anybody like to go move down in the company? Nobody likes that. In Ramadan, even the non-practicing Muslim takes an upgrade, becomes a manager, gets a bigger paycheck. Even the Muslim who doesn't pray five times a day, they have some iman, they begin to pray, come to the masjid, start fasting. Isn't this true? We see this, right? Unfortunately, many of them, when the month finishes, khalas, they go back to exactly where they were. And you would not want to do this for your job, for your corporation, under your boss. Why are you satisfied when it comes to Jannah and Nar to go back to an older position? Allah blessed you to boost you up, to take you higher. Now, Remain as high as you can. Okay, you maybe cannot remain that high. You cannot pray taraweeh every night, qiyam every night. That's understandable that you're not going to remain that high. But don't go back crashing down to where you began. If you went up a hundred notches when Ramadan finishes, okay, you'll move down 10, 20, 30. But don't go back down a hundred to where you began. The purpose of Ramadan, you climb up the ladder as high as you can. When Ramadan finishes, you move a little bit down, it's understood. But move only a little bit down. And then remain as high as you can till the next Ramadan. Where you're going to move up again, and then up again. And therefore, every Ramadan brings you closer and closer to Allah. Every Ramadan is that Iman boost that causes you to become a better Muslim. There's the sin that you have. This Ramadan is when you're going to give it up. There's a, a good deed that you're not doing. This Ramadan is the Ramadan, you're going to start doing it. And if you have this attitude, every single Ramadan, What's going to happen? Insha'Allah Ta'ala, every year you will come closer to Allah as you come closer to death. And that is exactly the purpose of this month. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala 
Allow us to be of those who benefit from this month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be of those who fast during its days and who pray during its nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our tongues to be in constant movement with the Quran and with dhikr and with dua and with takbir and with tahmeed and with tahleel. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts and our bodies and our souls and our minds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the, the little that we have done and overlook Look all of the evil that we have done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us during this month and for the rest of our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us many more Ramadans after this Ramadan. And may He make every Ramadan better than the one before it until we meet Him. Wa akhru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.